Greetings gamers, we are back with the latest updates from the creators of Enshrouded. It's time for their second big patch, and let me tell you, they have been hard at work addressing all of your feedback and enhancing all of our gaming experiences. Your support is not just appreciated, it is the driving force behind these updates. Now let's dive right into the patch notes. First up, on the topic of stability and performance improvements, the team has been working tirelessly to fix rare crashes, they've been shoring up the saving process to minimize player losses, as well as lightening the CPU load for idle servers. Additionally, you can now expect better performance in larger player bases as well as around large crop fields. They've heard you loud and clear and the game is now smoother than ever. For those of you running dedicated servers, make sure that you update that server to run the most up-to-date version of the game. Patch compatibility is key to having a seamless multiplayer experience after all. They've also fixed some pesky issues, preventing you from rejoining a crashed or cancelled session. Smooth multiplayer sessions await you. Now let's talk game world enhancements. Roaming enemies have been strategically redistributed for better balance, and you also shouldn't be running into any more enemies with levels that don't match where they are on the map. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever placed a flame altar near a shroud route? Well, doing so won't be causing the mist to disappear off the entire map anymore. Apparently that's not how you're supposed to save Ember Vale. Anyway, save points are also smarter now, preventing them from activating in deadly shrouds, leading to some pretty unfortunate death loops. Among several other minor tweaks, they've polished points of interest as well as tuned those vulture sounds down so we can actually hear ourselves think now. Excitingly, gameplay adjustments are actually already finding their way into the game as well. Firstly, they've tuned the stamina cost of jump attacks to more accurately represent what it would cost to pull off a move like that. This means less jumpy, slammy, spammy, and now more thoughtful melee combat will be needed. Were you ever climbing on walls or ladders with your friends and interfering with each other? While it was funny sometimes, it is also now fixed. Moving into the skill tree, the Water Aura perk will no longer heal your party while you're dead, making that one mage in your party who keeps getting one shot actually useless, even as a corpse. All right, here are the biggest ones for me. Crafting just got more reasonable. All of our archers will be jumping for joy as fewer twigs are now needed to craft arrows. And they've also increased twig and feather yields from their respective sources. So while you'll still have to hyper obsessively be picking up twigs on the ground and grabbing as many feathers as you possibly can, you might not have to spend quite as much time doing it now. Now this next one will bring a huge smile to anybody who's spent any amount of time trying to craft a late game armor set. That's right, they have decreased the amount of flax needed to craft high tier armor sets, which I assume just means that fabric and padding will be cheaper in the flax department. Praise the gods above, because as much as I loved playing Blue Flower Growing Simulator, flax farming was ridiculous. They also tweaked the requirements for crafting decorative books, which actually came just in time for our current project of renovating Fort Kelvin. Video coming on that very soon. Castle wall blocks were not stacking correctly, but you bet your sweet bippy they are now. And a couple of other small buggy interactions have also been fixed. To nobody's surprise, building and terraforming got a little bit of love as well. The construction hammer will no longer let you cut holes into unbreakable materials. Sorry, no more bedrock shenanigans. It was funny, but rules are rules. And that just about wraps up what we've got from the devs in this most recent update. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and it would mean a ton if you could subscribe to the channel as well. Comment down below what you think of these updates and what you'd like to see happen in the future. I'd also like to just give a huge shout out to the Enshrouded community as a whole. Your feedback fuels these updates and the Enshrouded world is evolving because of you. Keep those flames burning and stay tuned for more videos as we keep receiving these exciting updates. Until next time, keep creating, keep innovating, and happy gaming.